Hello, this is a demo on how to create dynamic buttons in an Android application. We're also going to put images inside of these buttons and then overlay text on top of the buttons. So to start with we need a new project, so I'm going to go new Android application. This is all inside the uh, Eclipse based uh, ADT and I'm going to call this one dynamic buttons. I would normally change the name to something more interesting, but I'll leave it for now. Now, and one thing I'd normally do is just leave the default minimum API, or SDK. Here I'm going to actually switch it up to uh, 4.1 Jelly Bean. There's a feature that we're going to use for scaling the bitmaps that was best used in 4.1. I will show another way to use buttons, but uh, 4.1 adds something that is very useful. So we'll accept that. We'll take all the other uh, defaults here uh, and just carry on. Okay, so now I've got my default application. I'm going to run it, Android application. I've already started up my emulator, and so we'll see here the em it pops up in the emulator. So we got a good start. Now, to start with, I want to figure out how to put these buttons onto my UI. Here might be my uh, standard activity, and I want to put them in here. So let's zoom in a little bit more. How do I want to get them in here? What I want to do is I want to have like a grid of buttons, sort of like the dial pad on a uh, phone dialer. I want to be able to configure that and I want to add them at runtime. So the best way to do this is to put it inside of a table. So underneath my title here on my relative layout, I'm going to add a table. And that should be under layouts and table layout. So I'm going to drag that in. I'm going to stick it right up here in the top left. Now by default, it gives me a number of tables, or a number of rows, pardon me. So let's go and look at the XML. So it gives it a name. Let's give it a better name, uh, pardon me, for this, so it gives it all that we're going to line left, below, looks good, wrap contents. Let's actually switch this to match parent, and I'm going to set that down here as well. So this will make it fill the rest of my UI, and then I get a bunch of rows. I'm going to leave those for the moment, we'll come back and make a couple of changes just in another second, and we can see here it stretches, uh, it doesn't quite show correctly here what's going to happen, but that's fine for the moment. Now a couple other things that we need to do in terms of getting the um, setup here correct. I'm going to give it a name in just a moment, and I'm going uh, I'm going to change a couple things. So I've got a project already. I'm going to copy and paste a few settings in from. I'm going to give it a margin. I'm going to give it a margin on the top of zero uh, dot and then I'm going to stretch columns. Star says that we're going to stretch all columns equally, so that will cause it to uh, stretch for me, and I'm going to go back here to my graphical layout, and we're going to rename this one. So ID, and let's call this one um, table for buttons. Now exception raise, divide by zero, so it doesn't like that, something about dividing by zero here. I'm going to get rid of these rows because we don't want them. We're going to add in our own rows and now what do we need? We're going to just double check that we got all this right. So we gave it an ID and we've got to actually give it a new ID so let's change this over to plus ID. For us to go with a new ID we're going to match the parent and a line left just below the other one we're going to margin on the top, and we're going to stretch all columns in the table layout, text table layout. So now we're good. We've got here the table layout and nothing in it. So normally you would design, you'd put things in at design time, at compi before compile time, as to what you wanted here. However, we're going to do this at runtime. So let's see how to do that. So that's going to be inside of my Java code. So normally you'd put kind of things in the on create. So let's make it a separate function. Let's call it populate buttons. And control 1 will allow Eclipse to autocomplete and it'll create the method for me. So when my application initially starts up, it's now going to launch my code here and I'm going to populate my buttons. So how many buttons do I want? Well, let's say we're going to want to uh, go through rows and columns. Make it that way. So for int uh, row equals 0, row less than num rows, row plus plus, and for int call equals zero, column less than um, calls, column plus plus. 
Now we don't have these defined yet, so I'll go Control-1, create a constant for each of those, and let's just start off with a two rows, three columns. Make sure we get that correct. Now how do we do this? Well, we're going to want to start to put new table rows into the table we created. So I'm going to create a uh, table layout, and I'm going to find that table layout. Let's call it table. I'm going to find it from uh, find view by ID. So table layout, cast it, and find view by ID, control space to complete, r.id, dot, and it'll autocomplete table for buttons. And it doesn't know what these are, so control one, and I'm going to import the Android widget so it knows what the table is. So now I know how the, I have a table that I can start to put things into. The first thing I'm going to have to do is for every row, I have to add a new table row to the uh, table. So table row, and we'll call this table row equals a new table row. When I call the constructor, I have to give it a context. The easiest context to give it is just this, which is the activity I'm working in. And again, it doesn't know what table row is, so I'm going to import table row. So I have a new table row. I have to now put it into my table. So table dot add row, add row. Oops, go back here. Table dot add row should work. Oops, pardon me. Add view. And I give it a child view, and so my child here is going to be the table row. So that sets up a new row inside of my table. Now for each column that I go through, I'm going to want to add a new button. So let's go button, call it button, equals new button. And again, I have to give it a context, this, so I get my button. And it needs to be added to the table row. So table row dot add view. And I'm going to add the button. So that's the basic structure here. We don't know what a, tab a button is, so we'll import that. So we First off, find the table we're going to work with. We insert a row, and then we populate the row for each time through uh, through the sequence. So if I run this, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. It should compile and uh, come up OK. And there we have our buttons. Of course, I click on them, nothing happens yet. I did want them to scale vertically, which it's not doing yet. So I'm going to have to do that. And there's a few other small things I want to do on that. So let's get them scaling. Now, one trick to this is we're going to want to set some of the layout properties. So on my table row, for example, I can make it fill the parent or match the parent. So table row dot, and now I can call the set layout. Uh, try again. It's table row dot set layout. Set layout parameters. And I can then give it some parameters to control how it lays out. So what I want to do here is use a new. Now I have to figure out what where do I want to get these layouts. It turns out I'm using a table, so table layout dot layout param. Now here when I call the constructor, I want to pass it in a few things. So there's a couple of different things I'm going to give to the constructor. The constructor I'm going to use is going to take in um, how to match the parent, so that's going to be under table layout. I gotta get the right constants dot layout param dot and then here I want to call match parent. Fill parent is the old constant, uh, match parent is the new constant, same meaning, uh, just better semantics. And then for the, that was for the, um, I believe the width and then the height, same thing, so I just went control uh, alt down. And then finally I'm going to give it a scaling, so I'm going to go at 1.0 and put that on one line just for fun. And that's going to tell it how to scale. So I give it a value, a weight of 1. So when it starts to scale, it knows how to scale it, what weight to give it. So let's try that. Having just changed the layout properties, come here, and we see here that the, uh, the rows have now stretched to fill all available space. But the buttons did not. Well, we can do the same trick for the buttons. So I'm going to select this. And then Control Alt down to copy, Alt down to move it down into here. And on my button, I'm going to set the layout parameters. Now here I don't use the table layout. I have to use the row layout, uh, the table row, I believe it is. Let me just find my sample here. Yeah, table row, table row dot layout parameters. 
And likewise, I have to do table row there. And by changing those, I get the right constants. If you don't, you're going to get a typecast error. So now when I run it, they now stretch correctly. Fantastic. Okay, so now they fill the screen as we wanted it to. So that's the basics. Now we want to do things like access the buttons and make them do what we want. So let's start by making the buttons actually do something. So to do that, each of the buttons here, we're going to say button b-u-t-t-o-n dot set the on click listener new view dot on click listener you hit enter and it's going to auto complete all that for me put in the semicolon at the end so it compiles now what do I want to do with this well I'm going to have it call a I could put some code here but I'm going to have all of them call the same place I want to take that out of here so I'm going to have it call a function so I'm going to call this one uh, let's call it uh, uh, grid button click grid button clicked I'll need to pass something in but I'll do that later on I'm gonna go control one I'm gonna create the method so that puts it here and I'm actually gonna move it into my normal class so I'm gonna move it down into just a normal class so it was all down to move it into the main now what do I want to do well let's put a toast message here so toast dot uh, make toast I have to give it a context, so this, give it some text, button clicked, a duration, so toast dot, let's give it a short so it doesn't stay long, and then I finally have to do dot dis, uh, show. Okay, so now every time I click a button, it puts up toast. Fantastic. Okay, so what more could we want? Well, let's put some text into these. So as I go through, I'm going to want to put something in the, each of the buttons. So button dot set text. Give it a character sequence. Let's say uh, I'm going to make it have the row and column. So row I'm going to use concatenation here. Concatenate it with a empty string to force it into strings. I don't really need that because I am concatenating it with a string here at the end, but this will work okay. So that'll set some text that pops up on the button, and I can see where we're at. Now, what if we actually wanted to um, you know, resize it? Let's try some resizing. Uh, if I wanted to say, let's go for 5 and 5, That looks okay still. But what can happen is we get to the point where the text doesn't seem to quite fit. So let's go for a lot more rows. And let's try 10. Nope, 10 still good. 15. Doesn't quite fit. Now wouldn't it be great if we could somehow make this just not have that creeping edge at the top? We can do that by setting the padding. So on each of these buttons, when I populate my buttons, I'm going to say button dot set padding, and we can then give it all of the paddings for the left, right, and so forth. So I'm going to do zero. Zero for each of these. All zeros, and I'm going to put a comment here make text not clip on small buttons. So now that looks pretty good doesn't clip any of my text off of, that's where I want to go. Now what if I wanted to make each of these button clicks actually do something more than put up the same message? What if I wanted to actually say, well, where am I coming from? It turns out to do that, we can do some neat tricks on that. So why don't I just make my grid button click to take in an int x and an int y, which is to say the row and the column. Of course, up here I have to then also pass in the x, so that's the column, and then the row. Now it's going to complain. It's going to say that you cannot use a non-final in an inner class. This is creating an inner class here, new, this is an anonymous class, and I can't use a variable that's used outside, inside of this, if it's not final. So there's a trick, actually. I'm going to create a new variable called final call and final row. And basically, these are both going to be constants up here. So int final call equals column 
int final row equals row, and both are going to be final. Now, I'm using a naming convention where these should therefore be uppercase, so I'm going to, oops, try that again, click on it, Alt-Shift-R, and final row, rename it, Alt-Shift-R, final, oops, final column. Make them both finals, and then we don't have any problems with that. So, button clicked, and let's just make this, update the message here to be plus x plus y, and put the comma there. So now, when I click on it, my on-click listener passes in two values. These are defined here, both finals. They had to be final because of the nuances with Java. And then, coming into here, we pass the values, and we'll display it. So let me run that again. So I'll click on 2, 1, and 1, 2. Hmm, I'll have to make sure that I'm doing that right, that I get my rows and columns, columns and rows correct. Let's go back and have a look at what we got. My on click is taking an X and a Y, putting out X, Y, and up here, I think, when I put the toast up, and when I put the text on it, I was doing row and column. I want column, which is basically the X, so column and row. Okay, so that should match up now. What I want to do next is start putting um, some graphics in. So, how do we make it put some graphics on to our system? Well, first off, let's get our image. So I happen to have here under commons.wikimedia.org, you can get a bunch of icons. I'm going to pick one here. Let's go with, uh, sure, the lock image. This is all in the crystal clear uh, set. So I'm going to copy, uh, save image link as. It's a PNG file. And then I can figure out where I want to save it to. So I'm going to go back into Eclipse, figure out where my actual project is from the properties, and then I can pull it up. So I'll just do that here off screen for a second. So I'm going to put it under the resource folder. Let me bring that on. So under the resource folder, uh, resource, and then I like to put it under the HTPI. I'm going to rename this action lock. It's the pink. You cannot use things like a dash or a space in the file name. So I'm just going to get rid of those. So action lock pink and save that in here. Under resource, HTPI, it doesn't show up. So until I hit a F5, it refreshes and now it's in place. So let's make it that when you click on a button, it switches it to showing that. So when you uh, click the button, we're going to make it so that it draws on this. It's going to change the background to give it that. Now, the first thing you might want to say is, well, how do I get the button? We created the button up here. The buttons don't have names. I really can't access the button any good way this way. The button was put into the view. I could work my way through the view to find it, but that's a lot of work. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to save the buttons when I create them. I'm going to call it buttons equals a new uh, button array, and let's do it with uh, rows, columns. Num rows and num columns. So I'm going to create an array of buttons. So down here, when I actually go into creating it, I'll do it when I add here. I say buttons, sub, I did rows, so this is current row is row, sub column, equal button. So now I have access to it. So now down here I can say button, uh, this button, let's call button, buttons, oops, sub row, my row is y, my column is x. Now my naming here is kind of weird. I've switched from rows and columns to columns to x and y, so let's do that. Fix this up. x is uh, column, 
and y is uh, row. Keep my naming consistent. So now we're in rows and columns, rows and columns. Okay, what can I do with this? Well, I can say button dot set. These just want to set background. And then I can give it a uh, resource ID. But that's not actually, let me just find here in my notes on the side. Yeah, I can do a set by resource ID. Set background and resource ID. And we'll see here resource ID, this was an API level 1, so all devices will support it. And I say r dot id uh, r dot drawable dot and that was the action lock. Okay, so this seems like we might be on the right track. I'm going to run that and then I click on one. The like icon comes up. So that's not bad except the size changes. That's really not what we wanted. I want the icon to scale to the size of my button. So how am I going to do that? Well, it turns out that using this set background resource does not scale button, does not scale image. So I'm not going to use that. So I'm going to scale image to button. Now to do this, I happen to have a uh, bit of code that I can pull in. So I'm going to get the width of the button. I'm then going to use a bitmap. Yeah, let's get rid of this action lock. So I'm then going to use a bitmap fa factory to scale the bitmap here, the action lock, into a new size. So I'm going to create an original, get the original bitmap. I'm then going to scale it. And then I'm going to set up the resource, and I'm finally going to, on my button, set the background to whatever this new one is. So I have to go through and import all of the Android resources and so forth. And there we go, making sure I get the right ones all the way through. So now, I think, with luck, this will work a bit better. So now we can see that it comes at the same size. So we're looking good. We're thinking, okay, we're most of the way there. Now that seems pretty good, except I've discovered if we set this to, for example, 2 and 2, it tends to scale things and resize them as you go, which isn't quite what we want. So the fix to this is to lock the size of all of the buttons. So we need to somehow change the button sizes. You could think, well, let's do it up here. Once we've added a button, let's just lock its size. But we need to let Android rescale everything first. Now remember where this is called from. This populate buttons is called from onCreate. And onCreate is before my actual application has been displayed to the screen. So what I need to do is find out once my application is displayed, then lock the size. Because then I can sort of say, hey, it's had time to redraw itself. And it turns out that that's not really terribly easy to find a good place to do that, except we happen to have this on click listener, so when you click a button, we're then going to set the sizes. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to add some code and call it lock button sizes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through all of my buttons, and I'm just going to set the min and max size to the current size. So for int row equals zero, row less than num rows, row plus plus, for int call equals zero, call less than num call, call plus plus, and we can get the button. So button, well, we've got this two rows, to, hmm, let's call this uh, locking, well, let's actually make this better. I'm going to cut this code. I'm going to create a new function. Lock button sizes. Control 1, implement it. There we go. Button, button equals buttons sub uh, row sub column. Now with this, I can go through and get the size. So basically there's a method 
I can get int width equals button dot get width. I can then say button dot set min uh, width to be the number of pixels, which is what we got from the width, so width. And then I can also set the max. So the max width to be the width. This may seem a bit redundant, so I'm, it's, it's a current width at the moment, and now I'm going to set the min and the max to be that exact value. This prevents it from being changed when anything goes on, in terms of you know changing the size of the content in the, inside the button, because the button wants to rescale to fit all the content. I'll just copy and paste some code that does the same thing for the height. And so now I'm going to walk through getting the button, and then I'm going to lock its height. Lock its width, lock its height. And I'm going to do this on every time you hit a button, which isn't actually a problem because if you're locking the height and the width every time, well, once is good enough, but let's do it all the time. So there we have it. It no longer resizes. So now we should be able to change this number of rows, number of columns, to be, say, 7 and 15. And let's do something a bit smaller. It's not going to look very good. Relaunch. And now I go through, and the icons appear. So in this case, my buttons are a bit smaller than my text, but that's not too bad. Doing OK. Now I can do other things. I could change the text, for example, as we go. So maybe when you click on something, I want you to also uh, change the text. I can change the text on the button whenever you click on it. I happen to have the button, so I can say button dot set uh, text. And what do I want to put? Well, let's make it just be, say, the column, single number. And I click on it; it changes the text to be just the column. So column zero, column one, column four, column nine. Okay. So what have we seen? Well, we've seen how to create a table, how to dynamically insert rows into the table, how to dynamically add buttons to that based on our Java code, and set the text, set the layout so that we see all these text on it. We've seen how to add an image to the project and then redraw it. Now one thing I need to mention is we used this code here, but it only works in Jelly Bean. That's because this API to set the background to a bitmap drawable was added in uh, 4.1. If you wanted to support older devices, you're going to have to use this first one, and you'll probably have to have rescaled the bitmap to start with such that it's small enough so that it will stretch up, but your button won't change its size. That's about the only limitation. If you're happy to use Jelly Bean or better, uh, the code will work as stands. Okay, so thank you for watching. Take care.